All right, welcome back. Uh, today in this video, we're going to talk about solving a uh, quadratic equation by completing the square. <clears throat> now, I do have a, I do have a, excuse me, I got a little, little something in my throat here. Um, if you have, uh, if you don't know what completing the square is, I do have a previous video that I did about completing the square. Please go watch that first, or have a good understanding of how to complete the square before you watch this, or else you're going to be pretty lost on what we're doing here. Okay, so solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. Here we go. The first thing you want to do is you want to set everything up. Okay, now this isn't this isn't a normal quadratic equation. This isn't a normal way to solve it. What you need to do is basically this is why I tell students take your x's and put them on one side of your equal sign. Take your numbers and put them on the other side. So here's my equal sign. Put the numbers over here. Equal sign. Or, <laughs> equal sign. Put the variables over here. Equal sign. Put the numbers over here. And then also, when you're setting this up, add some blank spots. Those blank spots are going to be used for when we actually complete the square. Okay, and I'll explain why we have two of them here in just a minute. Okay, now this over here, if you watched my previous video, this right here should be uh, should be familiar. We have this x squared minus 12x plus some number. We need to figure out what this number is so we can factor here in just a moment. Okay, so that number, how do we find it? We take b divided by 2 and we square it. Okay, so in this case, our b number is negative 12. Negative 12 divided by 2 and then square it. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is going to be a 36. So I have a 36 that I got to add to this left side over here. Now, going way back to the, your previous days of pre algebra and that kind of stuff, when you first learned how to solve equations, whatever you do to one side of your equation, you must also do to the other. So if I got to add 36 to one side here, I also got to add 36 to the other side. Got to keep the equation balanced. Must keep the equation balanced. All right, so now uh, what I can do is actually on this right side, negative 20 and a positive 36, that just gives me 16. That, that actually simplifies really nicely. On this other side here, this is where I'm going to factor. This is where I'm going to do my parentheses. I got x's in the beginning bubbles here. Numbers that multiply to 36, positive 36, and then add to negative 12 are negative 6 and negative 6. And again, if you do your completing the square process right, if you do this b divided by 2 squared, if you do that right, and you do your factoring right, you always get the same parentheses. And that's kind of the idea with completing the square, is you're always going to get the same parentheses. It makes the factoring so easy. Here we go. Now, after this, condense this down to the same parentheses. Condense that to just a single parentheses squared. So this is uh, x minus 6 quantity squared uh, equals 16. Okay, now if I want to solve for x, I'm solving this equation, solving for x, I still need to get x by itself, right? So I need to get rid of this squared and rid of this negative 6. So to get rid of squaring, I need to square root. Okay, squaring and square rooting are opposite operations. They cancel each other out. But if I square root one side, I must also square root the other side. Now, here's the, here's the trick, though. This little symbol. If you, if you introduce the square root symbol to the equation, that means that you need to also think about the positive square root and the negative square root that you could get from square rooting a number. Because... A positive 4 times 4 gets you back to 16, but a negative 4 and a negative 4 also multiply back to get you 16. So that's, that, that's kind of a, a short version of why, a short, easy version of understanding why we have to do this little positive negative symbol here. Okay? Um, these cancel. I'm left with x minus 6 there on the left side. Okay? Now, to continue to solve, take this 6, add it over to the other side. x equals 6 plus or minus 4. X plus or minus 4. Okay, now what this does is this, give, this is actually going to give us two answers. Okay, I have two operations here. I have a plus and a minus. So this is going to be 6 plus 4 and 6 minus 4. X equals 6 plus 4 is 10. And then 6 minus 4 is going to be 2. I have two solutions to this equation. You're, you're going to get that most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time you're going to get two solutions to any quadratic equation. Now, if you think about it just a little bit, a quadratic equation looks like this. If you were to graph it, it looks like a parabola. Okay, It looks like a parabola. This parabola would look something like this. Two here, 
10 here, my parabola would look something like this. The U shape there with a 2 here and a 10 here. Okay, That gives you kind of an idea of when you solve a quadratic equation, that if you were to graph it, this is kind of what it would look like. Okay, So it kind of gives you an idea of why we solve it and all that kind of stuff, what we can find from it. Now, if this graph doesn't convince you of your answer, you can also take these numbers and just plug them back up into your original answer or your original problem, and it will give you uh, the answer. I mean, 10 squared is, is 100, and then 12 times 10 is 120. 120 minus 20 is going to give you 100. So you got 100 on the left, 100 on the right. When you do 2, you get the same thing. I think you get 4 on the left and 4 on the right. But anyway, now I'm going to go over to this next example over here. I'm going to change my color just a little bit so we don't get confused. Um, mix up the colorings here. Okay, this, this equation is a little bit more complicated. It looks a little bit more complicated, but it just basically what it means is you just have a couple of steps you got to do before you start completing the square. Notice here, everything's out of order. This thing is a mess. Everything is out of order. Okay, your x squareds, they're supposed to go first. This needs to be in front. 3x squared plus 18x equals 45. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, get your get your x's on one side and your numbers on the other. Okay, now what I'm going to do though is, and notice over here, we need to have a 1 in front of x squared. So this 3, that's going to cause some troubles for us. We cannot complete the square with a number other than 1 in front of there. So that 3 has got to go. What that basically means is though, I just need to divide everything by 3. If you divide by 3, it'll make a 1 here. But if you divide one of your terms for your equation by 3, you've got to divide everything by 3. But notice that, well, everything is divisible by 3, so it's kind of set up that way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things here. Uh, that's not 18. It's supposed to be 6. 6x, six I'm going to divide all the numbers, but then I'm also going to leave spaces for when I'm going to complete my square. Okay, so there we go. Uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 18 divided by 3 is 6, and 45 divided by 3 is 15. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do is complete my square. Okay, I'm going to find the number that I need that goes in this spot. So I take, my, I take that B number, which in this case is 6. If you can read that, 6 is my B number, divided by 2 and squared. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So 9 is the number that I'm going to add to both sides. Okay, now... On this right side, you can simply just add this together, which gives you a 24. Now, if you're foreshadowing a little bit, over here we had 16, which reduced really very nicely to plus and minus 4. Over here, it's not going to be, we're not going to have that, that luxury, uh, but we'll get to that here in a minute. This year, I'm going to factor. In this case, I get x plus 3, x plus 3. Okay, now I'm going to condense that down, just like the last one. x plus 3 quantity squared equals 24. Now I'm going to square root both sides, get rid of the squared, x plus 3, quantity squared, try not to go too fast through this, plus minus the square root of 24. Okay, now, got the plus minus symbol in there, square root of 24. Now, again, I don't know what the square root of 24 is. It's, if you, I think it's 4.9, it's blah, 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 something like that. But in this case, um, we're, we're not going to use decimals. We're not going to use messy decimals. I, I hate messy decimals. They just don't they don't work out for anybody. Okay, So just leave it as a square root of 24 for right this second. Uh, we're actually going to reduce that. Um, but let me get this left side here up a little bit. So we got x plus 3 on this left side. This right side is going to be plus minus. Now, as I said before, that 24, I'm going to reduce that just a little bit. Now, remember when you reduce radicals, split it up using a perfect square. So 4 is a perfect square. 4 times 6 gets you back to 24. Now the reason we use a perfect square, the reason that we use a perfect square is because we actually know what the square root of a perfect square is. So in this case, the square root of 4 is 2. 16 over here, that is a perfect square because we know the square root of it is 4. 4 is a perfect square because we know the square root of it is 2. 6 is not a perfect square because we don't know what the square root of 6 is. So we just kind of leave it. 2 root 6, messy decimals, 4.9, blah, 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 something like that. Just leave it as 2 root 6. Okay. Depending on the type of problems that you have, depending on the type of problems that you have. Sometimes you use decimals, sometimes you won't. But in this case, I am suggesting that you do not. Okay, so I take this positive 3, subtract it over to the other side. Do not, do not mix those up. Do not make messy decimals. 
hate messy decimals. But anyway, uh, it also depends on what your teacher wants. Make sure you ask your teacher, do you want, this is what's called exact form. Exact form. Okay, that's exactly what the answer is. It's nice. It's it's nice numbers. It's easy to read, that kind of stuff. If you actually punch that into the calculator, if you take negative 3 plus 2 root 6 and negative 3 minus 2 root 6, you get just some messy decimals. I think it's negative 1. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. But again, I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to remember what it is. It's messy decimals. Don't want them. Okay, but make sure you ask your teacher when you're going through this. Do you want de you want exact form or do you want decimals rounded to the thousandth place or to five decimal places or what do you want? Make sure you ask. Okay, so and now what I'm going to do is very quickly, uh, very very quickly, go over a a way of us using the quadratic formula for something. Okay, for something other than just solving equations. So here we go. Uh, write the following function in vertex form and identify its vertex. Now notice that this, this equation is in standard form. Okay, x squared, 16x, negative 12. Got okay, your squareds, x's, and constants. Everything is in standard form. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to use my completing the square process to change this into vertex form. The vertex form of a quadratic equation tells you where the vertex of the parabola is going to be. This vertex has many, many uses. It tells you maximums, minimums. It tells you uh, the maximum height or the, or the lowest height, whatever it is. So if, you, if you're using it for a real life problem, it just it tells you so many different things. Okay, but again, depending on those examples, um, I don't have a good one. Well, I guess if you shoot a basketball, if you shoot a basketball, that's a parabolic function, okay? Because the ball go, the ball leaves your hand, it goes up, and then it comes back down, then it goes into the basket. Okay, that that right there, that's a parabolic path. That's a parabola. Okay, so the vertex, that that's the highest that basketball is going to go. You can actually figure that out. Okay, now in this case, the f of x, just leave it there. Just leave this function notation there x squared plus 16x plus something. So right there, there's something familiar. That's our, um, that's where we're going to complete the square. Minus 12 minus blank. Now, I'll explain why I put a minus blank there here in a minute, because it looks very different from the previous problem. Okay, just, just give me a moment. All right, so now what I'm going to do is figure out how to complete the square. So take that 16 number, take that b number, divide by 2 and square it. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 squared is 64. So it's 64 that I'm going to add here. But now here's the trouble. You can't just add 64 to one side willy-nilly, just whatever you want to. You can't do that. There are rules you have to follow. If I add something to one side, I have to add it to the other. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I did not put my blank spot over here. I left it over here. So, But the thing is, is I'm going to put my 64 here. It's a negative 64. It's a minus 64, which I did on purpose. If, you're, if, you're, if we're going to do this, technically what I'm doing is I'm adding 64 to here, and I'm subtracting 64 over here. Technically, I'm adding nothing to one side. Plus 64 and a minus 64, technically I'm adding nothing to to this one side. So it's it's okay. I'm keeping my equation balanced, which which is the general rule that you got to follow. Keep the equation balanced. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section here, okay? Be careful, wall it off from everything else. Take this section here and factor it. x plus 8, x plus 8. Minus 12 and minus 64, these can combine to a negative 76. Okay? Now some of you who know what vertex form is, you're going to start seeing it already. Okay, this is going to be x plus 8 quantity squared minus 76. This right here, this is vertex form. We're halfway done with this problem. Write the following function in vertex form and identify its vertex. So now I've got to identify the vertex. So now the vertex is xy coordinates, Now, which is really nice because here's your xy coordinates right here. That's why we call it vertex form. It shows us what the vertex is. Now, this tells you the y coordinate because this tells you... If you, if you studied transformations of quadratic functions, this right here tells you to go down 76. Okay, so that actually tells you the y coordinate. This one over here, this is kind of opposite of what you think. It's, it's right next to the x, so we know it's, it's horizontal. It's going to move left and right. But it's opposite of what you think. It's not going to be to the right 8. This one is going to be to the left 8. So it's actually going to be a negative 8 uh, is where our vertex is going to be. So that's a little bit different there. Okay, so our function is x plus 8 quantity squared minus 76 
and our vertex is going to be at negative 8, negative 76. Okay, I had to go through that a little quickly. I want to try to make this video short. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know I thoroughly enjoyed making these videos for you, uh, for you guys. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you guys learned something today, and we'll see you next time.